very first episode of The Scumbag. Now, The Scumbag is a very important podcast because it attacks... Well, it has to be the wrong thing. Discusses the most important parts of the internet, which are the vague, esoteric things that you might see pop up on random feeds, and you'll be confused by them, aroused by them in some cases, and generally, yes, you'll en- enjoy or hate them with every fabric of your being, like I do. I'm Ed Zitron, I'm here with Felix. Hello, everybody. Uh... The purpose of this podcast, like all podcasts, is it's a repository for the sexual pathologies, personal hatreds, and outrageous personality disorders that fuel online. Yeah, and it really grew out of the direct messages that Felix and I share because we both have what I have diagnosed as severe brain damage. And it's just, we'll talk about, and the actual phrase, the scumbag comes from internet tough guys, or just tough guys in general, who own guns and are in perpetual waiting for someone to attack them so they can use their guns. They've shot them three times. It's not a good scene. The scumbag stakes out my front door so he can uh, come in and take my possessions and take my wife. I, and take my wife, I... I have a lockdown on my wife's email, <laughs> and I have my red dot right on your forehead, mister. Yeah, and uh, yeah, he stakes out my what, my wife's Camry. I go and eat at Outback Steakhouse. Mm, I am on vacation drinking Malbec to destroy the liberals. The scumbag <laughs> is finding every promo code on uh, retailmenot.com to send up. my wife. Little does he know... Uh, the only retail he'll have is a toe tag once I come back with my Sig Sauer. <laughs> but that's the thing, though. that It's these bizarre elements of the internet that you may or may not know of as a listener. And so the natural place to start for that is, of course, the horny men of online. They are hilarious and in many different forms, ranging from relative innocence, but still horrifying horny, all the way up to more malignant, subtle, quite dark forms of human being. And there's only one place to start, and that's, of course, Hello, Sweetie, Moi, from Karachi. It's always fucking Karachi or some random part of the world. It's never, like, Scranton. Right, no, yeah. I think, like, the American horny guy, they're very direct. They're not as romantic as these guys are. It's in Karachi sometimes, but I think, like, obviously this is not scientific. I I have no background in science, social science, or really anything where you put numbers together. But, um, I, uh, one thing about me is that I use anecdotal evidence to build a narrative that is grossly offensive. Anyway, uh, what I have noticed is that a lot, it's a lot of Gulf countries. It's a lot of come to Riyadh, uh, come to Qatar, especially. Qatar is a small place where uh, I believe only 10% of the population is native-born, and they got a lot of free time, and it's also the highest obesity rate in the world. And all you can do is just fly in sweeties. That is actually amazing. And Qatar specifically, I just typed in Twitter, sweetie Qatar, and what worries me is how a few of these are actually just me joking about it. But I almost immediately got to a real one. But the 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 kind of it, it's not the first sweetie, but the most perfect sweetie I've ever seen is I don't know why he has this name. Adult Black Male on Twitter at Adult Black Male, and he found the best one, which is just this fellow called I'm going to mangle the pronunciation Fakar Al Bati, I believe, and his and his response is Hello cu- Cutie, come to Karachi, sweetie, and this is responding to someone. Who has posted this random white girl? Hashtag white girls are magic. This girl, man, Jesus, called Jason Bergkamp. So about the furthest, th- and of course he has a military. It's, it's a man, and oh, that that might be an Iranian flag, but I haven't I haven't got the knowledge to check, and I don't really do research of any kind ever. Really, when you think about it, all flags are the same. It's like you got some co- you got some colors, you got some colors, you got you put them in bars, and you're like, oh, let's throw an eagle on there. Fucking lazy. Fuck it. <laughs> I, 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 I'll put a dick on there when I when I start my own country. I don't give a hoot. But it, 
<laughs> who gives a who gives a hoot? Frankly, not that's, me. That's that's my that's my that's my political theory. I don't fucking care. But I love this one because it is these guys exist, and this guy Fakar is is amazing because he is just he is just so dedicated to being horny. I just have to really respect the man for it. He is just so horny. But the sweetie, the internet of sweeties, as we call it, is amazing because there's a beautiful innocence to it. I mean, it is inherently horrible, but still. Right, no, it's probably fucking horrifying. Like, I I am the target of uh, sexual desire for a lot of people who don't know that I, like, soak my mattress through and sweat every night. And I'm constantly, like, spilling American cheese from sandwiches uh, to my navel that's covered in hair. Basically, people who should know better to be horny <laughs> about. There was, like, a 4chan thread where a bunch of guys got horny for me and posted, like, every picture of me. Really? Uh, but like that's that's like now now we've entered the area where I don't no, know. No, I'm you're not kidding. kidding. That really happened. Uh, but like I think it's different for me. Like uh, you know, I am I'm a former special forces operator. I'm trained in hand to hand combat. I'm not. I wasn't uh, for new listeners. I was not really in special forces. But like my point is, I don't like fear people from the internet. But I think it's like different from a woman. And it would be if I was a woman, I'd be freaked out if a guy was like telling me to come to Qatar. If some lesser born prince was doing this. But at the same time, it is, there is an innocence behind it to think, like, oh, I can just, like, woo this woman by promising her, like, oh, sweetie, you're going to swim in my swimming pool and the air will dry your skin and it's the same temperature as the water. And, and those, those ones I found to be rarer, though, the ones where they're making the grand promise. I, I have found the vast majority of them to be just really just. Is it the, it's basically the form of, if I said you had a beautiful body, would you hold it against me? Like, I found one from from this fellow called Mark, just random dude, picture of him in what looks like Death Valley, saying, hey, sweet pea, what are you doing today? Moi, Mark. Is there a game there that they think they'll get a response? That's where the innocence part comes in for me. Does Is Mark sitting there being like, shit, I hope Olivia gets back to me? Or is he excited? I mean, I would like to know their thought process, because... Uh, it's, uh, it seems like, like, it's, it's something that, like, a third grader would do. <laughs> like, it's, it, it's adorable. It, like, that you think you could just be, like, uh, um, that you, that, like, you can just entice somebody with a series of romantic letters. Yeah, like, uh, I mean, Taylor Swift, T- Taylor Swift just broke up uh, with uh, Calvin Harris, who I don't know if he's the same person as Calvin Klein or not. I don't really care. To, I don't read the. I don't read the celebrity gossip. I'm. I only read news about train simulators, stuff that matters. The only online forum or website I read with any regularity is R slash trains on Reddit. So I really get it. That's me too. I only hear about the news when I'm at the gym pushing myself to the limits, wearing my training mask, and like I catch a glimpse of uh, CNN, uh, and then I just uh, say one of my famous bone modes, <laughs> and I go meet 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 the new boss, same as the old boss. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Taylor Swift is going to get a lot of requests from guys who are like, um, they're just like forty-year-old uh, men in Qatar, Saudi Arabia or Bahrain, or the UAE. The UAE is another big one. Uh, saying, <laughs> you know, you are so beautiful, I will he- heal your heart. And, like, the idea that she would see, that she even reads her on Instagram and would see that and would go, all right, all right, Sultan al-Khalifa. Uh, you know what? You seem like a sweet guy. I'm going to take you up on that. I will. You know what? I've, I've been going out with very attractive, well-built men for my entire life i think i'm gonna try some random dude from three thousand miles away let's just give it a go but you mentioned taylor swift and because my brain is broken i actually went and just looked up the phrase moi sweetie taylor swift 13 her handle and i have found the king of sweeties i believe i have actually look this is this is like the ark of the covenant of sweeties there's a fellow called ishmael i won't say his handle because i don't want anyone to harass the poor fucker but holy shit, since October 2014, this guy has made, I mean, almost a tweet every day, which has said, moi and sweetie, to Taylor Swift. Oh my god. This is the 
This is the most important discovery in science. I am sending it to you now. This is this is live, fellas. We've we've found it. This is this is actually amazing. It's for, and he's in Florida. This is actually we have done science during our very first podcast. What I love is this guy is really dedicated. Like water. This guy's beautiful. I love him. Hair. I love him. Don't he's fight, beautiful. sweetie. He has like an up upside down sideburn <laughs> somehow. This What's great is fucking awesome. These are amazing because he's exactly the kind of sweetie we've always talked about. Because he has the components of one and sweetie. And to the listeners who have got to this point, if you don't know what this means, it's the people who just respond with, hello, sweetie, let me marry you, and so on. But this guy is amazing because he said moi and sweetie in so many tweets. And then it took him quite a while to get to sex. But there we go, 30th of August, 2015. Don't fight, sweetie. In. We can make love tonight when you get in, moi, heart, trademark. No, yeah, this guy, I mean, we usually go on like a, uh, I guess a composite type of this type of character, but this guy does it all. And I'm looking at it now. Holy shit, this dude is dedicated. This dude is like Guilty Spark 343 from Halo, if he was horny. Oh my lord. This, this is great as well. My favorite one, by the way, is Happy May 13th, baby, Mr. Smith. Dot M, I'll watch with you. Couple five therapy. Really? Okay. I love you, sweetie. Moi? Question mark. Kiss? Question mark. Kiss emoji. TM. Heart. Sent May 12th. Was he asking to watch the movie Mr. and Mrs. Smith with her? I'm like... <laughs> I really hope so. Like, that's that's a really specific ask. Hey, honey. You want to watch Marley and Me? Like, all the forgotten <laughs> films of the late 2000s. Do you, do you want to watch uh, famous John Cusack classic, Gross Point Blank? I've had, se- I've had sex, like, at least three and a half times in my life. And every time <laughs> I did, it was because I watched a late 2000s romantic comedy. I thought you were just going to stop there and just be like, I've had sex. Just that, that, that point, point done. Yeah, well, I, I mean, that is the whole reason... Well, yeah, I mean, that's, look, I mean, like, I didn't want to write or do any of this podcast shit in the first place, like, in my life, but, like, around 2014, uh, people were like, you seem to really want to let people know that you've had sex, and I thought, well, I mean, this is the way to do it, and now here I am, I just let people know. Well, this morning, uh, off the subject, I was called out for SH asterisk TTING on my profession, when in fact, all that I do, the only reason that I actually attack the public relations profession is so that I can build a big enough audience to tell them I have had sex. That's really like the only reason people did anything. Like, why does anyone do anything ever? If you think about it, most innovation comes from people wanting to have sex. This is what the movie The Social Network was about, of course. But this was like Edison, Tesla. Yeah. I forgot the other science guys. I'm sure there are more. I think it's a good point before we get into the next one to mention and big thank you to our sponsor Theranos who yeah I, your wife Elizabeth I, it's really great really great sponsorship sponsored by Theranos they will take with one little prick they will take one bit of blood and they will tell you every disease you have and I want one important point though Theranos if you're listening could you resend the check it bounced and add thirty dollars. Um, because I, mean, I, I got a fee. Look, there may be. I of course do not want the appearance of impropriety on the on the podcast because, uh, okay, you know, I'm sort of bridging my professional life and my personal life. As many of you know, I am married. Yeah. I don't know if she sent the check from the company account or our joint checking account. Uh, but we are definitely going to look into that and fix that. But we're gonna get, we're we're gonna get. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure it'll I, I'm sure it'll come through. But good point to move on to the more because the sweeties, they are there's an innocence to them. And there is I'm sure I'm sure it's horrible to be to get if you that it is harassment, get random dudes being like, let me get you pregnant and marry you. I'm in the U, UAE. But the ones that bother me more are the more the false allies, the ones who are there. Who are definitely horny. There is no doubt to their horniness. They're so they're, they're, they're definite, their hands are down their pants. At least while they're typing. They are jacking it every time they jack into the online. And the, the really bad part 
Well, the way to identify them, and you might have seen them, you might have not on your feed. They are the ones who are like older fellas, and they, they're constantly retweeting woman. And there's nothing wrong with that. You retweet what you want. I don't give a shit. But there's usually a pattern. There's usually a pattern of, it's always younger girls, like they'll be like 20 years apart, and they're always talking about like women's rights. It's, you know, just got to stand up for ladies, stand up for ladies. And it dominates their feed in reliable chunks. Now, this is a very blurred line because I feel like there are some people who truly do, like, and I respect and believe very rarely, but occasionally there are guys who truly want to stand up for women's rights. But I've seen so many that are clearly just trying to get to know the ladies and then behind the scenes DMing them being like, hey, let's meet up sometime. You, if you've been online, you know what this guy looks like. He has, uh, he has like a very finely coiffed beard to give an illusion of a jawline. Uh, he, he has eyes that look like they've been morphed by endless <laughs> crying. Uh, the same thick square glasses <laughs> and like the hint, but not the courage to fully do a Macklemore haircut. Or they, or they are balding and they are doing everything they can. To stave off that hell. Like, even if it's one hair, they will keep that fucking hair. They will not go bald, all right? Oh, at all. Uh, the, you know, William F. Buckley once said that conservatism is standing athwart history and yelling stop. These guys are doing the same thing to the passage of time. Uh, but, like, no, these are, you've seen this guy. This guy, whenever any woman says anything, uh, are, are you okay? Because women, women are uh, they're they're ba they're just newborn infants who are wandering out in the world, uh, just unable to do anything unless a crying man comes to their aid. As well. and that's the beauty of it as well, of this horror show that it's always like a woman will be like, I was cat called on the street, but like, first of all, what the fuck? Second of all, are you okay? I think she's fucking okay, all right? It's just shitty. Be like, that fucking sucks. Shut up. And of course, retweet or quote retweet. What the fuck? Yeah, no, are you, you have okay? to let everyone see. Yeah, because all women are inherently it. defensive. That's the big thing. Yes. Oh, yes. Because it defines your quote unquote brand as a... I don't even know, because they're not male feminists. We'll get to them. But they are like kind of... Woman defenders. The the term ally. Oh, that fucking term. And it makes being online and having female friends of any kind on the online inherently more annoying and inherently more dangerous because there are these people who are in, inherently making it look like every single guy is in... They're looking for a transaction somewhere. Yeah, they're looking you know, for something. You know what it is? It's like the liberal version of the guys who have like ted rules for dating their daughter and they're all like oh, i was a member of the aryan brotherhood i'm gonna kill you <laughs> this is the liberal version of that number two whatever you do to my daughter you'll do twice you to, to, me. Do to me <laughs> twice <laughs> tasted all my daughter's boyfriends shout, shout out to loan option for that song <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a, a, a nice ring i will expect mine soon <laughs> I, I'm just imagining this big butch guy walking around with like a big diamond ring that he's bullied some poor sap into buying him through intimidation, possibly Three through months salary or don't even talk to me, buddy. <laughs> oh god, he returns it. He returns the ring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is terrible. But the, this is the liberal version. It really is. Okay, so Ed, Ed grew up in the nation of Europe. Uh, I grew up in America. Uh, well, I grew up in the Midwest, the most American part of America. And if you, if you, the most free, if you, like me, grew up in the Midwest, you probably have met this type of dude. He's, uh, he's a little bit older. He's like the 24-year-old who hangs out oh, in proximity to the 16, 17-year-olds. You don't really like him. You don't really like him, but like somebody, you don't have a fake ID yet. Uh, you need somebody to buy you Sky Vodka because you think that's what, like, you think that's a good product. This is getting very specific to me when I was this age. But, uh, anyway, this guy is, like, v there's one girl that this guy is, like, very protective of. Not at her behest. She does not want this. <laughs> but, like, he's, uh, 
he, you know, I'll kill any guy that breaks her heart, fucks with her. And he's all, this was in the days of MySpace, just always getting in these weird involved arguments on MySpace about anything. He's, if you've seen The Share Zone, the, this guy like made the memes that that shit's based off of. He is, he is, he wears big dog t-shirts. Yeah. And this is like, this guy, like, you know, and this is all over that sort of milieu of middle America. You, you have probably met this guy if you grew up in towns like Rockford, Peoria, fucking Barrington. Well, it, yeah. they had them at Penn State. There was always that guy who was on his like 80th semester because he was doing yeah. one credit as somehow. And he was there and there was one girl he'd latch on to. He'd usually change with the, with the semester. He'd find a new girl because I guess the other one called the police. But this is it. That's the real life version. Yeah, yeah. It, of this, except oh, yeah, they no, built. Like if, if this guy graduated and like got a fucking MA in literature, that's what this guy becomes. Yeah, and that's the and it's this is a really horrifying one though because I won't I won't name names, but there is someone within circles I've been in who has done this with the intent of actually having sex with girls, and it disgusts me because ever since I learned that happened, I've started watching other men. I know, and being like, oh shit, they're doing it too. It's one of the, it's fucking dark. It's really like using somebody's vulnerability, like t- taking them when they're really vulnerable to t- try to come in and fuck them. That's fucking, that's some fucking dark, really fucking gross it shit. It really is. No, I, I I fully agree with you. And and it really is dark, and it's the worst, it's the worst when it's in a professional setting. I've seen a few cases where, what they do in the professional setting is they treat it like almost a, if it's a writer or a photographer, they'll do it. It'll be like, oh, I want to mentor you. It's like an adult, adult child relationship. There's something really dark and paternalistic there. And they want to drag these poor girls into their world. And it's just weird. And they build up this rich tapestry of retweets and quotes and articles they've read. They're not quite male feminist but they are definitely the ally and they are there for you okay they're just there for you you ever need them just just i'm just one dm away here's my number do you want to chat i'm free anytime yeah it's i'm there for you like that doesn't just sound like fucking omnipresent and terrifying i'll ignore my wife and my kids i fucking hate my wife and kids oh god my wife and kids are just terrible yeah it's like so yeah, yeah, it's like a guy who's upset with how his life went. And he finds this... It's like he's half cynical, but is half deluded enough to be like, I'm on this great moral quest to protect this woman. When really he's just like grooming grooming whoever. Like, it's it's one of the most fucking craven, dark things ever. It makes you, it makes you want to uh, just retreat to the mountains or join a monastery. Yeah, and I actually know a real-life monk who is on Twitter... And I almost want him to join the podcast at some point just to give his opinion on on these multitude terrible things. Because that's another part of the, the scumbag we didn't mention. That there is a darkness to a lot of this internet communication. It's not discussed by BuzzFeed or fucking New York Times or anywhere. They don't actually dig into it because they don't want to be seen as basing themselves off of anecdotal evidence. And I don't give a shit about evidence. I make stuff up. No, but really, it's... These are things happening. And they're happening a fair amount. I've seen at least 15 of these fucks. And this leads into the less dark, but still pretty shit one, of the kind of... the, The internet jokesters we've seen popping up who are doing it... To kind of definitely want to have sex. That's, dude, yeah, that that is a big one. That is a big one. Uh, again, I have no background in statistics, uh, but nine times out of ten, if a man has his fave star in his bio, he is just in, like, 50 DMs with girls named, like, it's Kayla's tweets. Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> really fucking sophomores in college, and this dude's married, he's 45. He takes his ring off to DM, and he's just like, oh, so what's your major? I think your tweets are really great. Follow these wonderful gals. These wonderful gals. Every when Friday. Someone, dude, would someone, when I see any dude, like any dude be like, follow these wonderful gals, and it's like a Twitter com- comedian guy, I'm like, I'm like, T minus at most 12 months until this dude has a weepy paste bin apology 
about just fucking slinging his dick out there in every DM. Yeah, or or he quits Twitter in a rage because I don't know who wouldn't have se- woman X would not, uh, but he does it in a way that he's like he doesn't call anyone out. He's just saying I just you know I put my trust in someone and you know I was on here just to have fun and just make jokes. But you know what? No one has any respect anymore. No one respects me. And this is the same person who is posting the same absolutely putrid, shitty, fav star, fave star, whatever you call it, humor. This fucking nonsense where it's like scripted, like me something, cop something, me joke. Those jokes, like, you know, yeah, the jokes where it's always like, uh, I love it when they do the brackets and set things up. Yeah, in the most uh, the most complicated. I'm way. in a I room, saw, dude. I saw the I saw one that was like, "I'm in the Navy for this tweet," and I was I was just this dude fucking rules. Did they actually they should, say for they, this tweet? Because yes. I kind I kind of love them now because that yeah, is that dude that dude, fuck all these other guys, but that dude rules. That, that dude about. rules because that is just I I respect anyone that dedicated to being just shit. Yeah, that dude is like the Michelangelo of hacks, <laughs> uh, but. No, yeah, I love those, and they're always like on a first date. Uh, d- uh, d- d- don't tell her that you, the only movie you've seen is Space Jam. It's all Space Jam because like all these people want to recapture like the last time in their lives that they were happy and weren't engaged in fucking Machiavellian plots online all the time because they all want to write for At Midnight. Oh Christ! I don't even know what At Midnight is. What is At Midnight? Some like stop the point. I want to know what is this shit. I. I don't know. I think it's like Chris Hardwick is on TV and uh, he's like, uh, hey, here's some tweets. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really don't know. That's like, that's how I see it in my head and it's probably not too fucking far off. But I've seen at least two people I respect tweet it so it can't be that shit. But who knows? At some point, we'll, we will both actually like, see what it is and it's probably awful. That's just, just, it's a natural point at which to... To ju- just assume that it will be shit. I- I'm such a piece of shit, though, that if, if, like, in the odd event, like, a producer from that show emailed me and was like, hey, I, oh, God. I really like uh, really like your podcast, really like Carl Diggler, if you want it. I'm such a piece of shit. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm totally the same. And a little aside, I, I, I would probably, like, even though I've ripped on just about every outlet out there... If New York Magazine, New York Times, whatever came along, they're like, Ed, do you want to write something? I'd be like, yeah, sure. Hello, I love you. Do you know how many times I've fucking shit on The Guardian? If The Guardian was like, uh, do you want to do an op-ed about Uber, Saudi Arabia? I will actually have sex with a goat to do that. So if, if that can be the story, in fact, to go with the Saudi Arabia one. In fact, forget Saudi Arabia. But that does lead very neatly into a new, a new feature, considering this is the first episode, we want to pull, pull the shit of the week. And that this is not meant to be a trite thing where we just hate on things. We hate on one thing. Singular. That isn't trite, that's smart. And I know it, it's, it's, it's organized. Efficient. But really, your one this week was just that there could not there could not be a more perfect tech story for you specifically, Felix. I really don't understand tech. Uh, for the most part, I break like fucking three phones a year. I don't understand anything. I could barely install Rainbow Six uh, on this computer. Uh, <laughs> but sometimes something exciting happens, and it does go something I understand. Saudi Arabia recently and... invested <laughs> a few billion dollars from its so- sovereign wealth fund into Uber, and you know, like Uber, really kind of like the Instagram of car services. Uh, just innovate disrupt all of that shit and saudi arabia saudi arabia has disrupted several nations over the years with its innovative investments including their own including their own yeah like they disrupted whether shia muslims are human beings or not uh if we you know they disrupted the women can drive market but uh anyway like whenever anything positive happens you know there are going to be haters and people were like, oh, Saudi Arabia beheads people for being gay. Oh, it's easier to tear somebody down than to build someone up. Uh, but a hero came to de- the defense. Balaji S. Uh, Srinivasan. Oh, God, that guy. 
let me let me quote his tweet essay. By the way, when anyone's doing a tweet essay, you know it's some good shit. Like it's always some good shit. Yeah, it's it. That's primo. I, I'm doing kissy. Mwah. I'm like the uh, chef, a uh, chef on the pizza box right now, reading this. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's hungry man dinner. <laughs> okay, so he says for decades Saudis funded Wahhabism. Now they're finally endorsing something else that the young of the region can get behind. Obviously, much much to criticize in Saudi Arabia, but it's very good that they are investing in tech versus terrorism. Huge signal to entrepreneurs there. Read read startup startuprisingbook.com to contextualize Saudi investment in Uber. Talk to folks there. Major step forward for tech in the Middle East. Does the book give you brain damage so that tweet makes sense? Yeah, yeah, it's like you just get it and it's like a perfectly timed flashing of lights to to, to Oh, you're a fucking oh, I idiot. A I get it now. Uh, okay, so there are multiple things I like about this tirade. One is the idea that Saudi Arabia, like, that they have very limited money. And they're like, all right, we can either invest in we can either invest in Uber or we can continue to fund terror groups. One or the other. It's not. Yeah, I mean, Saran, Saran gas is pretty expensive it's, these right, days. It's not like we have literal trillions of dollars. And that we we haven't funded like we didn't fund Jaish al Islam or Arara Arara Sham in Syria. So some of your favorite venture are, capital yeah, no, companies. Uh, I'm waiting for Andreessen Horowitz to pick up Jaish al Islam. Uh, um, this is Benedict Evans. I think this is quite rude. <laughs> uh, I you know I, I I've known I've known Zoran al Lush the the leader of oh Zoran al Lush is dead. I've known Mohammed al Lush the leader of Arara Shah for years, and though people criticize him for locking Shia women in cages, <laughs> I've never seen him do a personal attack on Twitter. <laughs> Just something to think about. No, but his... I genuinely don't know if he would know any of those no, names. No, no. I mean, he doesn't even know the rug story. I, 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 I truly want to send him a rug. I want to send him a carpet. I want to, I want to like, like, it'll probably get me thrown in jail, <laughs> but I want to do it. But, but this... But this oop, I want to hang out. I want, I like, as you said to me once, I believe it was this guy's pants just perpetually fall down. So I really wish he would have given his take on this. But what are the implications here? How bad is this? That's the one thing that I feel like you could actually answer, which none of the tech press can, because actually knowing about Saudi Arabia and tech, there are vastly different disciplines, truly. Yeah. Um, well, Saudi, Saudi Arabia is going through a very weird period right now. Uh, the current deputy prime minister and also uh, or deputy crown prince, excuse me, and uh, minister of defense, uh, Mohammed bin Salman, son of King Salman, who reputably has dementia, the king of Saudi Arabia. He's also been – Mohammed bin Salman has been running the entire war in Yemen. And the war in Yemen has been horrifically fucked up. They have spent billions upon billions upon billions there to the point where they're actually issuing bonds, which is something that the Saudi government never does typically because they don't have to. Oil is very cheap right now, uh, partly because they didn't cut production for a very long time despite the Iranians who don't get the same profit margin per barrel of oil that the Saudis do. Uh, they've spent a lot of money on mercenaries because Pakistan turned down a request to use their troops in Yemen. They've been pushed back into their own territory and committed a rash of war crimes in Yemen, inclu including using cluster bombs and bombing sort of tent cities that Shia set up. But, I mean, they don't give a shit. They don't even think Shias are human beings. They don't think they're fellow Muslims. So, so just so we're clear, still the same country that just gave $3.5 billion to Uber. Just so. Same one. Right. They also, also, I mean, talking about a step forward for progress in Saudi Arabia... They executed for, uh, I wish I had this in front of me because I'm going to fuck the number up, but it was 42 people, I believe, in January, including in, including Namir al-Namir, who is a, uh, a Shia cleric and a preacher who, he was not sectarian at all. He was totally against uh, sectarianism. He preached against despots, whether, no matter what sect they were never incited a riot and they just fucking killed this dude but uh, now they own part of uber 
I mean, I don't know if they could exert any influence, but it's still fucked up that Uber took the money. Right. I mean, there is no step forward in Saudi Arabia right now. Mohammed bin Salman is in the process of taking over the entire country. He took out one of, you know, there are 20, they're reputably, no one really knows the number, but they think there are 25,000 princes. And Salman's faction has sort of advanced and he took out another faction's. He's sort of taking out those people in the government. They replaced the oil minister, which was a really big deal uh, because they had a lot of differences there. He's just he's taking over the country. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's not things aren't really getting better. I mean, he did pull back the religious police, but they're still fucking beheading people for all. This they're shit. killing people. And yeah. this is the same fucking com- the, the company I was about to say. But I mean, same country that literally just. Inve- like, how does Travis Kalanick actually take this money? How do you even start it? Did he go to them? Did they co- Like, hey, how's it going? Oh, it's Saudi Arabia's on the phone, Travis. Oh, fucking brilliant. I need some money. Like, Path-, Path took money from, and I'm speaking from memory, so just assume that's bad, from a very dodgy Indonesian investor. And that was seen as pretty negative. But now this is, this is categorically bad horrible yeah no this is terrible but um saudi arabia like they've been making a move under solomon solomon i don't really think he understands fully how money works because he said saudi arabia is going to sell aramco yeah saudi aramco is saudi aramco is their entire oil production company that produces all the oil there and in their foreign properties that's like the only thing i know about saudi arabia (laughs) that's a good thing to know but it um it's one thing it it could be worth one point five trillion dollars or more. No one really knows. You don't just fucking straight up sell that company because who buys it? Who has that money lying around? Uh, even what conglomerate buys it? You'd have to break it up, and by the time you break it up, like it would take like two generations to sell something that big. He's also talked about deinvesting uh, three quarters of a trillion dollars from America, which would cause them to actually lose two hundred. Fifty billion dollars on the investment they have. So he's perfect for the startup world. He has no idea how money works, and he just spends it arbitrarily or sells things for no reason. You're right. No, exactly. He has no idea. But I. Oh my I, god, he's the first startup leader. He is. Yeah. No, he's the start. He's the startup prince. And I think, I think with the Uber thing, they have a ton of people working on their sovereign wealth investments and their family investments. And I think probably someone who isn't a fucking idiot with money. I uh, said, hey, we should put some money into Uber, and they did it. I mean, it, $5 billion is sort of a drop in the bucket for the Southern Wealth Fund. But it gets worse, though, because at least a billion of there. I think it was three and a half or five. I can't remember how much. I think it was five. Well, however much, it's still in the billions. So the one thing that I remember is that money's going to China as well. This does have geopolitical well, it's getting really serious with the scumbag, but... Oh, yeah, holy shit. Yeah, wow, look at us. But in all seriousness, as far as the shit of the week goes, this is like the shittiest thing, I hope, that happens that we talk about in this podcast. Because holy fuck, like, they are just spending money that is going to influence America, China, specifically those two markets, as well as probably the rest of the world. I mean, that I don't know how... You never find out what percentage of the company they own. But it was at the same valuation as the last round. And it's just, it's worrying for Uber because how, what? Like, are you that desperate? Yeah, but I mean, I think people assign a veneer of respectability to Saudi Arabia because... Why? Because we live in a stupid country and <laughs> we we live in a stupid world where we're like, ah, oh, yeah, you know, uh, we... Hey, this country, they have a different, they have, you know, they have a different set of values. They built things on the sand. Yeah. Well, we haven't blown, well, okay, the other countries did have those, but we blew, we blew them up. But whose fault is that, right? Yeah. Right? We, I mean, <laughs> after 9-11, uh, the late Prince Crown Nayef, who people put in, they thought he was going to be the king, if he didn't die of diabetes, related complications in 2012, he was probably going to be the king instead of Solomon. We'd be looking at a different set of circumstances right now. Not that, you know, he was a fucking complete piece of shit, murderous scumbag himself. But, uh, he, uh, in the 9-11 commission, or no, this is pre-9-11 commission, actually. In a counterterrorism subcommittee hearing in front of the Senate in 2012, or 2002, uh, somebody said, I forget which senator said that they should remove, the Saudis should remove Crown Prince 
uh, not yeah, not he wasn't Crown Prince at the time. I'm sorry, I'm going from memory, and I keep fucking things up and correcting them. But uh, they should remove Prince Nayef from his post as Interior Minister at the time because he had a lot of connections with a lot of groups that were connected to the hijackers or at least connected with al-Qaeda because of the shit that they did in the 80s. But none of this is really, none of this really ever makes it out there because it's not, I mean, Americans don't really give a shit about foreign policy. It's not that we as a pe- we Clear, Clearly American companies don't Oh, no, either. they don't because they bank on people not giving a shit. And, and they win. They, yeah, they win because it just, I mean, Americans, I don't think... You can just generically say we're good or bad people, but I think if more Americans knew like how awful the practices of the Saudi government are, both domestically and what they do abroad, they would think this is a terrible thing. But it just it's not really high on the priority list. It's not something people care or know about. And when it's covered in the Western press, like after they did do they did a huge interview with Crown Prince Solomon, who's at the young age of thirty, like a budding war criminal just has killed all these civilians in the Yemeni war just talking about how he's the like this it's we joked about like us calling him the startup prince but this is what the interview was like and it's like well shit if this is the only time that people who watch CNBC or whatever hear about Saudi Arabia well they're not really gonna notice when Uber gets five billion dollars for X which is, is gonna be people on Twitter like me going I mean, I guess I'm bad too because I like I made like a pithy little joke. I said, "Here are a few of my favorite things." Well, it's this horrifying event, but it's you know you just get so exhausted after a point. I mean, dark humor is what this is all about, and I mean to, and you're, you, but you have touched on the soul of this podcast, which is the terrifying nature of of the internet, but also on top of that, the fact that. I've even had to ask you to teach me about Saudi Arabia because I'm not a complete dipshit. I'm like 90% there. I can learn things. But just the the osmosis of life has not brought Saudi Arabian knowledge to me. I feel like if people knew and had the capacity to know, it would be quite difficult. It, it's very difficult to know all things about all things. And it is ultimately the responsibility of reporters to try and learn this but even then i have sympathy for them because if you were you're the person writing for wherever whatever tech blog and suddenly you see saudi arabia invests and your knowledge is that saudi arabia is in the middle east and no wait it's not iraq cool okay i can just write about this positively that's pretty much the thought process if you've not been educated on the subject and being fair here american education british education there is not a great in fact, there is, to my knowledge, no current affairs education that exists in the education system, and there should be. It's always put in political science. And I think political science is a fake discipline anyway. I majored in international studies, uh, and I had to take a lot of political science. Uh, I think there are some things in there that are useful, but it's. I think anything that's sort of pretending to be a social science without a great deal of data is essentially made up. And we're learning, we're learning these fake things like, like, uh, oh, the, uh, the party decides theory instead of these very re like these very real systems of oppression. And I mean, it's, it's until about two years ago, people thought you were a crank if you talked about Saudi terror funding. And now it's sort of accepted. It's a pretty accepted thing. It was, you know, during the primary, it was one of those things that Donald Trump said where you're like, oh, my God, I wish this guy wasn't racist because he was right about this. He said the Saudis funded a lot of terrorism and you 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 almost wanted to cheer for him. Wait, wait, wait. I got I got a tweet from the future that said Donald Trump had some good ideas. You see, he's kind of like hip. It's kind of like Hitler. Wait, where's my gun? I need to put it to my. But talking of fucking cranks. And idiots and hacks. All right. I think it's rude to call someone an idiot, a hack, or a crank. I'll let you decide for my shit of the week. The piece from The Ringer. The Warriors are the perfect bandwagon team. Written by, as we were discussing over our DMs, Jason Conception. Which I think is a mid-90s EDM remix guy featuring Diplo. This is the worst sports piece I've read in my life. And I've read a lot of shit in my life. I, I, 
uh, my friend Phil and I describe it as hell diving. I will read crap. I will read stuff just to hurt myself. Well, yeah, no, that's like Ed. Ed DMs me stuff every day that's terrible. And I mean, I guess it's kind of my job now to read shit that's terrible and make fun of it. Uh, and that's. But let me read you the opener of this. People join bandwagons because they convey the subject feeling of winning. The Warriors are the perfect bandwagon team for the post-internet era. Their bandwagon is light years ahead of everyone else's bandwagon. Say bandwagon one more time. He doesn't, actually, in this graph, funnily enough. It's a self-steering electric IntelliWagon that gets 1,000 miles to a charge. I'm fucking stopping. I'm too angry. Oh, dude, this is really bad. This is really bad. So It's such a bad piece because... There was a, a, to go back in my history, I was a games journalist for a long time. And this reminds me of a movement within games journalism. I don't want to talk about fucking Gamergate. I don't want to discuss it. But this is before that. And it's called New Games Journalism. And it was when people went, oh my god, for about 20 years all we've been doing is reviewing games. Now, pause there. That's what people fucking want. They pick up a games magazine and they're like, oh, what new games are coming out or have come out that I may or may not want to purchase? Oh, a feature about an interesting developer. Great. But then some arsewipe was like, you know what? We need to make this high end. The same thing happens with MMA journalism. Where, (sighs) like, yeah, I read about MMA. I want to know what fights are happening, what fights are scheduled, uh, what fights got canceled. And I like technical analysis. I like it when a guy, shout out to my friend Patrick Wyman, like a guy who really knows what the sport is, like telling me strategy, what he thinks is going to happen based on that. But then he get yeah, some asshole comes along and he's like, he writes an article called, like, The Incandescent Unapologetic Art of Anderson Silva. Oh my, shut the fuck up! And the worst thing is with every single one of those pieces, with no exception, is they could be written in a non-vomit-inducing way, much like this one. You could write that the Warriors are the most fun... I actually made the point, I was at Game 1 last night, and I said the same thing to the person next to me. I said, you know what I love? The Warriors were both, they were both the underdogs and the most winningest team in the NBA in the same season. That's so cool. That's what this piece is saying, effectively. Except it's saying it using pros such as rooting for the Warriors is buying Microsoft shares in 1990. It's being in the room at Bletchley Park when Turing broke Enigma. It's getting to name drop Steph Curry. I fucking hate everything. It's just like, it's, it's just, and here's the quote. Here's a top highlight. To roll in the dubs wagon is to feel that you're not just rooting for a great team, you're making the game of basketball better. How the fuck? What does that mean? What does that actually mean? And being mad is what the scumbag is about, and I am mad at this. This is somehow a very short piece, but very laborious to read. And the amount of energy he puts into... He doesn't have a fully formed idea. The amount of energy he puts in is like just sitting in your car with about a gallon of gas left in your tank putting your car in neutral and just fucking gunning it like this is i don't even know what he's saying is he saying that it's like bad because it's the perfect bandwagon what does post internet mean he says this is the post internet bandwagon says a thing posted on the internet in a brand new publication on the internet if i pitched if i even just like took this took like four paragraphs from it and sent it to an editor invocative or deadspin and they were like they would be like, this isn't even, like, you didn't even pitch this. Or, like, this isn't even, like, a fully formed pitch, must, much less an article. But you actually make a really good point. <laughs> but you make a really good point. It's a three-minute read. It's a three-minute read according to the medium algorithm. But it feels like I've been reading it my entire life. It's like it's like a, it's like a life labor. That It's just something I have to struggle through, like, fucking IBS. Like, it, it, it's just like... Steph's counterpart, Kyle Irving, scored 26 points, but shot a Mason, like, okay, cool. Great, thanks for the fucking obtuse reference. Thank you. We get it. You... Is it a Mason, like a stone Mason? Or... I don't know. Like, is, is Mason a player? Is No, I... because he didn't capitalize it. He must mean, like, stone Mason. Or does he mean, like, a Freemason? I don't know, because I don't know what the fuck this dude is saying in the thesis of this piece. I don't think he does either. And what I love is the ending is... Love actually played well, but if the Cavs want to make this series, LeBron is going to have to turn himself into a human bandwagon and carry even more of the load. No, he's going to want to play better fucking basketball than the other what fucking do you mean team. Human, human bandwagon? What? What the <laughs> fuck is a human bandwagon? <laughs> I'm thinking of like a Ben Garrison cartoon with like LeBron James carrying like 
a team on his back and it says America and like in his pocket is something that says chemtrails and like I, I don't know like I don't know what the like this is definitely something that people read and retweeted and obviously wrote in the case of this fucking guy that he clearly wrote it with the intention of sounding intellectual which is going back to the new games journalism going back to my, a great deal of journalism for sure but this is the very essence of Grantland, the worst shit of Grantland, because there was some good shit occasionally, yeah, and no, then some really good shit. But this is the worst of it. This is exactly what we don't want, because you've got these Bill Simmons is weepy prose about his buddy Scroat. I'm stealing that joke from Deadspin, I think. His buddy Scroat, who like one time licked Kevin Love's nuts, I don't know, and like then one time he like looked at a wall and it reminded him of LeBron James, and that's a thousand words of the piece right there. But then you've got shit like this, which is just, what does it mean? Like, this actually means nothing. And that's what infuriates me so much. Because you see, I guarantee, I'm not going to look because it would just make me mad. But really, I bet there are so many people retweeting this being like, dead on. Nailed it. Right. And I mean, that's, I guess that makes this a post-literacy article. Yeah. Like the post-words. The warriors of post-internet. Because... What does post-internet even fucking mean? I don't know. I'm on the post internet because I love to post. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, all slash trains. This is this is post meaning. He's not saying anything. This is like I think he's saying like the Warriors are really. I really like watching the Warriors. That but that is that is the only you, meaning. You, you can't unambiguously like something anymore. You just have to. You have to like put it put, like put a fucking layer of art around it. Yeah, even if it just means nothing. Actually, you, that, you can't you can't that, just unambiguously be like, "Wow, the Warriors are really fun." You have to in the post internet age. The you, you, can, you can in tweets, but you can't just what you can't just write a piece these days, or at least you very rarely see people writing it where it's just I like thing. Otherwise, you're considered well within sports. I suppose you can within tech. You're a shill. You have no opinion. You have no opinions. The moment you become a journalist within anything with reviews, you have no fucking object. You are just. An objective robot that is there to give analysis. I, uh, look, I wrote a really <sighs> in the weeds thing about YouTube bodybuilders. But, like, you know, for as much, I don't know, it was like three, 3,500 words or something. I don't even, I don't know. But it was, look, I went pretty in the weeds for, like, a pretty silly culture. But that was more me saying, like, hey, I think this thing is interesting and weird. Here's some stuff about it. Uh... I get you know that's one way to do it. The other would be if I made it seven thousand words and I was like the post masculinity blah blah. <laughs> like, I think that I think that you can write about silly things. You can assign a lot of meaning to shit like basketball or fucking MMA or anything. Like you absolutely can because there is a lot of meaning there. It's a part of a lot of people's lives. People have a strong emotional connection to it. Well, what you what 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 you can't do is pretend like your description of the meaning that you can read people's minds that you can you can not just read their minds but you have a celestial vision into the meaning of their life and <laughs> like the, the the add like an existential meaning to watching a fucking basketball game because there isn't one there really isn't and talking of just assuming shit about shit Let's close with our favorite horny guys online. And that would be the male feminists. I just listened to an internet podcast by BuzzFeed that brought up this very subject with one of my Matt McGurry tweets, which was fun and all, but yeah. And there is this amazing cluster, as you well know, of these hilarious guys who are like, I am... I'm a feminist. I'm a male feminist. And then they also, what's really funny, and we'll bring up Charles Clymer. They, they, Charles Clymer is a pro. He is a fucking pro at this. But what they love to do is do, on one hand, they're like, I'm a male feminist. And it's like, okay, fine, whatever. And then they'll be like, we know what. The correct way is just to not even say male feminist. You just have feminist beliefs because they're correct. Which is, like, not necessarily wrong, but also fuck, fucking confusing and terrible. And Charles Clymer being my favorite for joke reasons, 
such as his Twitter banner that is literally just... I should be able to call out her name. I shouldn't. The Supreme Court with the Photoshop of whoever. Oh, oh Ruth, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yeah, yes, that's it. it. Forgive me. It's been a long week and I'm terribly stupid. I think, I think it was Lone Option, Lone Option who said uh, uh, <laughs> that Ruth Bader Ginsburg is the Chuck Norris for people who have more than five unpaid internships. I'm <laughs> that's a fucking great joke. That is amazing. That is... Very true. That is actually probably Charles Clymer. But Charles Clymer is a great example of the male feminists, the ones who are posting all day, every day about like, you know what? We need to stand up for women. We need to do this. We need to like respect women. We can't, we can't deal with like this man who like keep women down, which is fine and correct. And I agree, except it's all day, every day. Like, like the world's worst AM radio station. And it's, it's amazing. But he did the most pro move in arguments on the internet. I think you called it to my attention when he was like, uh, yeah, I don't actually have a gender. Yeah. No, yeah. That was, that was fucking amazing. So Charles Clymer is arguing with a, uh, this woman who's a black, black, uh, socialist. And, uh, because Charles Clymer is, whether he likes it or not, is like, he's a white man, uh, <laughs> It doesn't matter how many times you tweet a hundred times a day. We need to listen to women while you're just talking and talking and talking and fucking talking. You know, you are who you are. Uh, but so he gets in an argument with her. It was something stupid. It was something stupid. Like you can't criticize capitalism if you go to Starbucks, which like great take. This is what Charles was saying. And the woman disagrees with him. And in the course of disagreement, she says, you're a white man saying blah, blah, blah. And Clymer goes, I am actually a gender, and you've just misgendered me. Oh, that, that is, that is shithead, MVP, greatest of all time shithead move Dude, that in is internet like the history. Jordan flu game I, of shithead moves. Yeah, I mean, that is just, it's like, it, it, it's like, someone pulls a gun on you, and you're like, wow, I have cancer? It's like, wait, what? Wait, that ha- what does that have to do with anything? Fucking hell! Like what? What? And it's just complete discom- discombobulation of the entire argument. Just like what the what the Dude, fuck? When he did like, that. He thought he was like Neo when Neo could see the zeros and ones. He like beat the he beat the identity politics game. <laughs> he was like, no, I can claim anything. And of course, like the next day, he's he tweets like, after several years, I finally, you know, have realized that I'm gender fluid. And I guess he forgot that he had this amazing revelation because in all his articles from then on, it's like he, he's, you know, he, him, Charles Clymer is a man who, but like, <laughs> I guess it was a very fucking short lived discovery. I don't, I don't really, I don't, I don't, I don't know, but these, these guys, they, and they do bleed into the guys who are discussing who are horny online for random woman. And, but in his case, he is just, the differentiator I find is that they are banging that drum specifically with statements over just random retweets because he's got these like retweeting Sarah Ben and Casa. But I just found it's great as well. I love these people because I don't even need to look for an example particularly hard. Dear Ryan Gosling, I say this with love and a bit of frustration, and now it's a screenshot tweet of some fucking writing. Someone please tell Ryan Gosling that it hurts feminism when the ridiculous women are better than men trope is trotted out in some idiotic, ham-handed way of empowering women. Pause for a moment. Why didn't he say ham-fisted? Was he worried he'd be talking about fisting? Anyway. So, want to empower women? Support women candidates for office. Learn about rape culture and street harassment. Research if there's a... Oh, fuck off. No. Just, just no. What is, so, like, what... I wasn't even aware that it's Ryan Gosling list. said anything. Like, I don't, I, you know, I unfortunately, I'm not very well informed. I do not have a Google alert for Ryan Gosling feminism. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I turned mine but off. Like, yeah, this, this dude's entire thing is to be like, all right, you guys have waited for my statement on Ryan Gosling and feminism. Here's, I got to criticize him. I just, I got to say it. And it, this, this, this dude is just like, he's, this dude is a fucking barnacle <laughs> like he's is is latching on to any movement that will ha- that will tolerate him i guess or not just immediately be like fuck off charles and there's and there are many like him but i definitely see him eventually doing like blackface oh yeah at, 
and and like being like I'm actually African American now. Yeah. I'm I, an African American non specific gendered person. Yeah, Please I refer thought, to me as they. I did a little research on this guy because he's just like fucking. He's awesome. so bad. I love this guy. Uh, and there was like a face. There was a thing where. He got kicked out of some feminist group for, like, plagiarizing yep. chicks and fucking harassing them. He was which, kicking you know, them out of the shock. group. That is the first time I've ever heard of a guy like this doing that. I've never even heard of that. You yeah, know? it could be. It's, it's new. But he... No, what he was doing, I remember this. He was... It wasn't just that. It was absolutely plagiarism and stuff like that. But the big thing was that women were coming in and understanding being like, Hey, you're a guy? Yeah. Like, you're a guy talking for woman, and any dissenting voice deleted. And they, he would just, it was, and it's beautiful as well, because he definitely has gone on multiple rants. As have multiple people within this horrible archetype, they have gone on these rants where they're like, you can't censor woman, you can't shut down woman. And they live in this crazy fantasy world where basically, I don't know, like, like, this isn't me being cruel here, I think, but why does Ryan Gosling have to spend his entire fucking existence campaigning for women's rights? It's a good thing, but he's, like, doing some shit. And it's good he supports it in any way, but it's like, do you, why is why is Ryan Gosling... Spe- I mean, he okay, so he has a platform. And why isn't he talking to fucking Nice Pete or whatever does um, epic rap battles of history... Why isn't he? Why isn't he talking to him or like fucking like any of the Twitter joke men with a hundred thousand followers? Why isn't he like, hey, can you do a Twitter joke about woman's respect? Uh, I think it's because for a guy like Charles Clymer or like any guy like this, their entire politics are performance and consumption, and they're like they think that it says something about you if you watch a certain show or li- listen to a certain type of music or listen to a specific artist or if you you wear a certain type of shirt this is a statement about your character it's like it's a very calvinist idea it's a very american thing that our character we can figure out whether we're pro we're we're uh going to be experience salvation or not depending on our consumption choices this is the most american shit i can think of and because they think that all politicians are celebrities and all celebrities are politicians, they're like, oh, Ryan Gosling is one of the most powerful leaders I can bring to account. Even though, like, if you, anyone who knows anything about anything is just like, this doesn't fucking matter, really. <laughs> like, hey, shit, we were, ju- we we're just talking about Saudi Arabia. We're talking about a country where half the population is or second-class citizens and aren't even allowed to drive. And this chat, like, and they just, they spend all this money to buy part of a huge American company and it will probably give them this influence and legitimacy even more than they already have despite their incredibly repressive acts to women including beheading them and killing and all types of shit for speaking against the regime but this fucking Yahoo (laughs) because his entire (laughs) politics are formed by uh, celebrities is just like all right. Someone has to look. I like Ryan Gosling, but uh... and because I hate myself just that much, I just searched for hashtag male feminist, and wouldn't you know it? Right there's a BuzzFeed article. I was a thirsty male feminist for a day, and it was exhausting. And let and let me tell you, this this piece is definitely well meaning because Ryan Broderick seems like a solid fella. But it's just like, oh fucking hell, oh fuck. He did the, he did a good internet explorer thing about it, but it's just like, it it, it it's th- this whole male feminism thing. Oh look, and of course Arthur Chu's there. Fucking Arthur Chu. Oh yeah, well that, that, he's like, <laughs> he's like the fucking Vito Corleone of male <laughs> feminism. He's uh. Didn't Vito Corleone have a child, real job? Not be a toxically masculine child. <laughs> you know what if i ever get famous with being on jeopardy i think I'll, I'll fucking jump out a window and be famous for that instead it's like oh i think ken jennings is cool okay guy. yeah that's because he was like the most winningest jeopardy player ever like, or arthur chu was on once yeah he was once. Like, or Chube. maybe twice it's still jeopardy it's yeah. still and it's like why is that i just don't maybe it's that these men lack meaning in their lives 
and it's great. And I must say, like, truly, as a person, I think it's brilliant that there are men out there who are supporting feminism. It's great. Good on you, fellas. Be truly good. But if you need to fucking talk about it all the time, to go back to your point about performative statements, it really does make me wonder what you think you're doing. Are you... Is it a combination of, is it that well thought out? Is it a certain ego-driven thing where you think that you are that important that you will make a difference? Oh, yeah, no, I think it's that. And I think, you know, we go back to, you know, it all goes back to, like, I guess our identity as Americans where we, you know, what's a big part of American Protestantism? It's a big part of our cultural heritage. It's uh, very vocally calling out the heretics. And it's very vocally, very vocally pro proclaiming your own righteousness. It is the triumph of faith over acts, faith alone. And uh, just by stating your own dedication, you know, it's a lot like Wahhabism. It's a, this is your Taweed, your oneness with God that you, uh, you're, you know, as a feminist, I've decided to be a feminist as a male feminist. It's like we, we get, I guess, in this very small but vocal circle of weirdos, they give a special currency to male feminism, the, just the concept male feminist, because it, they think there's they should be given an extra reward for being a man, but voluntarily relinquishing, you know, whatever they have, even though they're not. I mean, they're not relinquishing any power. You look at Charles Clymer, he's still fucking domineering people and telling them what to do, but he's just doing them under the skies. I like that he also changes his language with this tweet, saying that's kind of dicked up instead of kind of fucked up and guessing. And I guess that just decoding this message, I'm guessing that his thought process is, I'm going to say dicked up because I'm going to demail myself. Yeah, but I mean, you know, look, it's going to, in, in, in three years, it will be the next thing. It'll do the next thing. Like, I, you know, maybe, maybe Palestinian rights will have a sort of a renaissance because it seems like we're going to a third in Tifada, maybe, and he'll, he'll give himself an Arabic name. And like you know, look, oh, there's that, fucking no, that would there, be amazing. Don't fucking get us wrong at all. We are like obviously no way saying there's fucking anything wrong with these causes, but we're saying that these guys are fucking barnacles who attach themselves to the most cynical. They're bandwagon. They're bandwagoning. Oh, the post internet bandwagon of feminism. <laughs> no, but they are actually bandwagoning, and it's sad as well because it's and there's um, a friend of mine, Laurie Penny, who's a very good writer that I really want to actually show Charles Clymer and see how angry she gets. Who's written as a woman, you know, because they really should be the ones writing about feminism being woman and all. They're female. But Jesus Christ. Okay, but then, okay. I'm, uh. Nevertheless, she has written her, this amazing book. I can't, it, and her book is just all about her experiences personally and what she has seen as the construction of feminism, it's a lot more complex than just that that statement, but also the things that have led to the point where women are at the time. And that is a beautiful thing that's actually doing something for the world and actually defining the problems and potential solutions. This fuck is just like, I, I'm, I'm not a woman or a man, I just don't have a je gender. And I'm going to retweet some ladies. And I think it all comes down to just ego and kind of sad. There's a sadness to it, to all of the, all of the, every horny guy online, everyone who is just a dude online being something promotional around woman, because that's really what it, the core of all of these things are, except for the sweeties who just want to fuck. And they are all doing this because there's a certain sadness and emptiness, I think. I'm not going to psychoanalyze much further. But they're doing it because they want to feel attached to something and they want attention. And so why not choose an inherently good cause and just fucking be like, I'm going to be an expert in this. It's what people in every industry do. Except in this case, it's just, I don't even know how to describe how wrongheaded it is. And how I just, it's cool that there are men who support feminism. The idea of male feminists is just, weird it's a weird one to me i don't yeah i think it's uh i think at its worst like with the climber it's like a uh it's a fucked up monstrous guy who has always wanted to tell people what to do and is latched on to a movement 
in order to do this. Uh, and I think in other cases, uh, maybe guys' hearts are in the right place, but they're, they're, uh, Ishmael, like they just, uh, his heart is in probably the truest place of anyone we've ever talked about. <laughs> I think he's the most in love anyone has ever been. He's a beautiful man. But, uh, I think that it's, you know, the, it's man's search for meaning, but they don't know how to find meaning because they're <laughs> fucking on Twitter 14 hours a day or reading medium articles. And they're like, oh, this just, this must be what me, what meaning is. And they're just, they're just sort of adrift spiritually and empty. And I think, and I think that that is apart from the Uber thing, which is philosophically different. I think, including the bandwagon article, every single one of these people is just fucking looking for some meaning, and they are doing things using this horrible internet we are on to find some thing. Like they're like, oh, I'm unhappy with my life, so I'm going to try and have sex with a girl who tells jokes online. Oh, I'm unhappy with my life. I'm going to write some deeply complex but really it's not complex at all because it has no meaning if i just type a load of numbers that doesn't make it a complex number it's just a load of fucking numbers without context all these people are just looking for something sadly that something in many of these cases is either attention or well attention in the uh, vaginal yeah no i mean I, i i feel like yeah the kind of attention you get for being seen to it's a combination like people want a fucking moral quest they want to be morally right i think that's look man you want to see some fucked up shit go up to any local news facebook page out of anywhere in america or anywhere in the uk probably i don't know uh and the guardian comments are a classic classic, example just go on that facebook and look for any story about like a guy who robbed somebody's house or is getting sentenced to however many years in prison for you know, fucking waving a gun at somebody or stealing a car or something. And just see these people who are like, if I was in charge, I'd fucking kill that guy. And they're just, they're just getting so mad. They're just getting so mad. They want to kill this criminal so ma- so bad. And if you look at what their lives are, they're, it's probably, like, not a lot happens. They probably get in a lot of arguments. Like, I've gone down this K-hole where I've seen people talk about how they should castrate a guy who fucking stole a car or something in the local news section because I'm like, God damn, this is dark. I wrote a men's advice article. I no, but I it's a good closing point though, because I wrote a men's art, a, a men's advice article where I said timid things like you know what you should probably have an equal relationship, and a guy was like yes, yeah, guys should be castrated, and someone else responded with yeah, he probably already is because I was like you know what you should probably listen to your girlfriend. It's like thank fucking Christ those guys are there to tell the real truth. Yeah, no, but yeah, it's like I think it's. I mean, we're we're getting very dark now, but uh, I t- uh, what one time this like a uh, theologian once told me that her idea of hell, you know, this is a common idea of hell that it's not like fire and brimstone and eternal punishment necessarily in the corporal form, but it's like, it's a place without God. It's that you you have no meaning, that <laughs> there is no love. It's just sort of chaotic and empty and eternal dread and anxiety where nothing ever really happens and you're. You're just adrift. I think if you 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 get to that point where you are to, you, you need to feel something so bad that you pretend that you really want to kill people who uh, rob a Circuit City or <laughs> whatever fucking store, and you know I guess that may be like the more right wing version of that. You become a real crime and punishment guy. You want to go put all the sickos on an island and nuke it because that's what I would do. There's a difference between right yeah, and wrong. Yeah, that's, that's where they should yeah, go. Yeah, that's my moral struggle. Because nah, that's, that's my mo- that's a logic. That's a logical decision I have yeah. made. Yeah, because it's your you moral know, struggle. It's your quest. It's because you feel, you just feel that panic. Like maybe your life didn't work out how you wanted it to. Maybe your all your relationships are fucked up. And so you... And you and I are not immune to this though. Oh no, yeah, we both. I crusade not. for my PR bullshit. You, cr- you crusade for... To very right to, to basically educate people on multiple subjects in the Middle East that they haven't fucking. I don't think I do that. I talk a lot. I, I I write comedy. I talk a lot of shit. But you do your political your political <laughs> commentary as well. Come on, you have your crusade. Yeah, I do do that. I, but I at do least that as well, I'm also a sports writer, and that also means nothing. <laughs> but I think the <laughs> a good place to end this though is with one choice quote from one of my favorite writers, Ishmael, from April 9th of 2015. I'm at Taylor Swift. 13. I'm in Ashley Furniture, sweetie. Kiss, your place. Moi. That's beautiful. 
So, so listeners, do you think he was buying? He was like offering to buy Taylor Swift furniture from Ashley Furniture. She could use it. Like, do you think? Uh, yeah, does she? Does she? Where does she, where does Taylor Swift? Where does Taylor Swift buy furniture? That is a podcast subject we'll have to investigate. Sound off. In but the I think comments. that's a good clue. Yeah, thank you. But subscribe to the podcast, download the podcast. I've been Ed Zitron. I'm Felix Biederman. And this has been Scumbag. And thank you for listening to the first episode.